research projects that Gladys has done. Uh, so it's going to be a fantastic talk. Before we do that, though, I want to uh, thank Improving Enterprises for uh, hosting us, giving us pizza and drinks. So a round of applause. Yeah. Diana has a few words. Hi, I'm Diana. I'm with Improving Enterprises. I'm Diana Hedlund. And I just want to thank you guys for coming. And I wanted to also let you know about one of the members of the Dallas UX group here that's having a global big day that we can in May. And he has a flyer here, and I just want to let everyone know that if you register for this flyer in this little country, you can discount. It's a, it's a two day boot camp, Saturday and Sunday, and global big day. I just want to be member, so I just kind of wanted to let you guys know about that. I would introduce that to you guys, and I just want to thank you for coming. And so I have more of those flyers here. And the day long. Yeah, the day long. Yes. So he's offering two seats as raffle tickets. So make sure you sign up on those sheets. And hopefully you can win. Then I'll send out more information to the meetup uh, to spread the word. Okay? Good. All right. Great. Excellent. So, Janelle, it's your turn. Go. Yeah, so, we're all very closely connected in this UX meetup group, right? So, very special friend of mine, and obviously you all know him, so I'm just going to invite him on stage because we got a special day for him. Dean, if you could please come on stage. Come on, Dean! Come on! So, we're going to need your help. Today is Dean's birthday. Yes. Yay! Yeah. 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 All right, so let's sing happy birthday. I'm going to start it out. Ready? Yep. It's Dean, right? Right. Oh, oh that's perfect. All right, one, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you, Dean. Happy birthday to you. All right, so uh, as we always do, if there is anybody that is uh, hiring, this is the opportunity for you to stand up and announce it to the crowd. So is anybody hiring? Yes, sir. Um, my name is David Nancy. I'm with Sedetti USA, Sedetti Dallas here in, in Dallas, Texas. I'm the Digital Transformation Practice Manager, uh, where UX uh, architecture, UX COE, is one of our main focuses. And we are looking for good UX uh, researchers, UX designers, uh, UX people. One of, I've got an immediate need is for a UX architect to help us build a UX COE at a very large client of ours. And it's an immediate need. So if you're looking, I'll be here. Please find me. We'll hook up, get your resume, and get you into the process. Great. Go ahead, sir. I'm Michael Carr. I work with a company here in Addison called Anflix. We have a client in Uptown that's looking for a social media expert. Uh -oh. Hey guys, my name is Barin. I'm a software developer. I work on the Tripcase product at a company called Sabre. There's a lot of very brilliant alumni here from Sabre. <laughs> So we are hiring for a development manager and a team lead for the team that I will help. So one of them would be my boss, and one of them would be uh, his boss. I'm just kidding. So yeah, you would be leading the team with, with me and Ken and a few of the other people here. Sure. Cool. Thanks. Me? 
Anyone else? <laughs> I know you do. We're in a company called Project 202. We're a fairly large professional services software development company and design company in the Dallas area. We're always looking for people. Like right now, we're actually not hiring people today, but in the future, we're, uh, we are continuing to grow. So we look for design researchers, uh, designers, and then uh, front end developers and, develop and, and, uh, and full stack developers as well. Make an announcement about open genome. Yeah, one more. Okay. Yeah. Hey, Brian. Um, I'm Cassie Caesar from TCG, the yeah. creative group. We have ongoing um, um, opportunities in your area. To that market on right now, they're immediate. Um, I have interviews on Monday and Tuesday are for um, a healthcare client in the Addison area. Um, they're going to do a project on um, creating an internal web portal. And um, looking for a UI designer for a six to nine month project um, with um, agile experience. And then another opportunity I have um, that's been kind of difficult is a Fort Worth client. I have a SEO and also a social media manager position. So if you want to um, just introduce yourself to me, if you'd like to connect for future opportunities, or if you have any experience in those areas, and I'd like to meet you. Yeah, go ahead, sir. I just had a quick question. Um, do we still have a Slack room for this group? And if so, can I get the right by you before you pass it to me? Yes. We will have to do this. I will get that on my computer. Thank you. All right? It's right there. It's right there. There it is. Yeah. See? Boom. You can't see it? All right. It says, uh, student, password is improving. It looks like improving is a capital I and then lowercase improving. Improving with the capital I. Great. So uh, the other thing, the last thing that we'll do before we begin is um, if you uh, are an organizer of a meetup, let people know about what's happening in your meetup. So I know Randy is here. Stand up. And My name is Randy Crow. Uh, I run the DFW Data Visualization and Infographics Design Meetup Group. We meet uh, once a month at the free group. And we have our next one. We have a guest speaker coming in on May 4th. Cole Nussbaumer from California is going to talk about the death to pie charts. Um, <laughs> so um, I have cards if you just need the URL to the meetup group, but you can just search for DFW, database, or infographics and you'll find it. Any other meetups? Red. Yes, sir. Um, I sort of represent two different meetups. The first one is DFW Scrum. This is primarily for folks who are on Scrum teams, be they in the development side, the Scrum master, or the product owner. And there's also Dallas ALN, Agile Leaders Network. That is primarily for the leadership around Scrum teams, Agile teams. Uh, both, both these meetings meet here. They're generally these third and fourth Tuesdays of the month. Please come and join us. Great. Thank you. Excellent. Is, is, uh, is Rand here? Uh, Jeff here? Is, uh, Refresh has a meeting. Rand is speaking. I think it's middle of May, maybe May 13th or something. Right. He's talking about uh, surface design, probably here in this room. I, I, I assume. So. Rand and Ward. Yeah, yeah, sorry. There's another main one that's not here. Is it not here? Is it it's at, uh, I don't know, the building. Okay. So Dallas Refresh, Rand is an approving employee, is speaking about surface design. I believe it's May. It's a note. So with it's a major thing. Other good jacks. All right. Ken Tabor, stand up and give them your news. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody. What news? What news? I got a lot going on. <laughs> Thank you. Um, a couple of years ago, I spoke at uh, Big Design. Some of you, uh, I was very happy to see you in the audience. It turned into a book deal, and Focal Press has put it up. So August third. It'll be available for sale. You can go to Amazon.com, type in my name, Ken Tabor. The first entry will be The Art of Knife Throwing. That is not my book. <laughs> it's called Responsive Web Design Toolkit, Hammering Web Designs in Shape. So that's the one you want to actually pre order. Same topic. Very similar. Very similar. <laughs> Uh, hammers mostly, hammering websites mostly. So I, I could use everyone's help to get the word out on this because uh, you know it's tough to tough to find anything anymore. So so thanks so much.
So a couple of years ago, I was doing a workshop. Uh, Gladys was uh, good enough to uh, suggest helping me out, and she brought all these artifacts of all these great design projects that she's done. And I had suggested, wow, that'd be a really great topic for a talk. And it took about a year and a half, and here we are. Uh, one of the, are you going to do the one uh, field study? Beautiful. That's actually the one that I wanted her to do. Um, this is an amazing study. You're going to be floored with how she was able to pull it off. There's tips and tricks. There's drama. There's laughter. There's crying. Everything. <laughs> so, without further ado, Gladys Rosalinda. where I had met Brian, he was working on um, a packet of top 20 UX methods. And so we kind of collaborated together and I designed them and whatnot in this kit. We're selling this kit for $20 to help out a fellow UX person named Molly that um, has not been feeling well, her insurance has run out, and we're just trying to help her in whatever way we can. So anybody that wants the kit, it's 20 bucks and you can come see me at the end. Molly, I'll slide. Yeah, I'll yeah. slide. Okay, so um, hopefully I talk loud enough so that you guys can hear. But basically what I'm here to do is really explain um, the power of design research. And I, of course, think that um, design research has all the power in the world, right? And if you're my age, you know what that means. So we'll leave it at that. So design research, to me, is really about searching for signs, right? And if you look at design research per se, you can kind of pull that out of it. But it's really a human-centered design thinking process to really understand users, to understand um, the context that that user is in, to then be able to better develop products and services. So there's a lot that you can do. You can create empathy, you can understand problems, you can see patterns, you can connect the dots, you really get to contextualize experiences. So this is the design thinking um, process per se. This is from the Institute of Design, my alma mater. And basically, you can kind of see that there's five major buckets. And usually when people think about design thinking and whatnot, they usually just think about the research part but really it's much more than that. And you really have to go through the entire process to really understand your users, your, the company that you're working for, and how you're gonna bring this all to life. So, the project that I'm gonna show you guys today is a project that I worked on for seven months for the Chicago Tribune. And what it was, was the Chicago Tribune at the time was in bankruptcy and they were scared half to death, and they were trying to figure out what the hell, hopefully no folks would <laughs> what the hell can we do to make some money, right? So you also have to think a little ways back. It's when the iPad started coming out, and when people are really not reading the newspaper that much and whatnot. And what they came up with the idea was to create a tablet, right? That tablet looks really nice and sexy on the screen. But this was the tablet. So it's a high wide um, tablet. It's not the most beautiful thing in the world. It weighs a ton. But this is what they had and what they were trying to promote. And what they were trying to promote was a digital first experience. So it's kind of like YouTube. When you go to YouTube and you have to watch an ad for three seconds, and then you can swipe and actually see the video that you wanted to see. That would be the same thing on the tablet. You would first get hit with the news for a couple of seconds, and then you could swipe and actually use it as a tablet. But they were hoping, of course, that you would want to read the news, right? So what do we need to do? We need to understand what kind of research it was that they were looking for. When they called me in, um, it was like, okay, we have this project, we have this tablet, we now want you to figure out 
if it's going to work, right? My budget was six million dollars. Not bad. I wish I would have gotten twenty percent of that, but I didn't. So basically, I had to create a research plan based on the whole idea of proof of concept, right? So if we start off with definition, right? We're trying to sense intent, and what I needed to understand was their goals. You know, other than we want to save the company and we want to make a ton of money, right? But what other goals do they have? What are their objectives? You know, what are they trying to do? Who are they trying to reach? What is going on? Their expectations. You know, what do they think is going to happen once I come back to them and say, this is a brilliant idea, or what happens when I come back and say, this is a shitty idea. Right? What the hell were you guys thinking? And also, when you're working with such a large corporation, what are the agendas that people have? What do they really want that they're not telling you that they want? Right? So taking all of that, then come up with um, a whole array of things. So who are my stakeholders? What are the time frames? What's my budget? Who am I really trying to target? with this project, <coughs> and I come up with a research plan. So what do you need to know when you're going to come up with a research plan, right? So uh, what kind of preparation and information do you need to even deploy your research? What user research methods do you employ that maybe are different for a proof of concept rather than just starting from scratch? When I got this project, the tablet interface was already done. So it's truly a proof of concept. I'm really testing to make sure that people like this idea. I don't have the luxury to change anything on the interface. How many customers do I think it's going to make sense for me to interview? And why? So trying to come up with that plan so that then I can create, send that plan to the Chicago Tribune and they can um, use it. What kind of internal resources at the Chicago Tribune might I be able to use and how would I use them? They have a whole U.S. department, but none of the U.S. department had any exposure to design research. And if the solution was not specified. If this was not a proof of concept project, what kind of research would I do? Let's say if I could go back and actually start from designing the interface, how might some of that, I'd be able to pull some of that into my proof of concept to give them a wider range of ideas and solutions at the end. So we start the research phase. So we really need to know context, and we really need to know our users, right? So now I got hired, like on a Wednesday, and on that Monday, it's like, go, okay. And you're just running around like a chicken without your head. First thing is, I need participants, right? Like I said, they already had the interface. They had already shipped all of these tablets to a whopping 2,000 people. So I'm like, oh my God. I've got 2,000 people that I need to deal with. I just knew my God would mess with that. So they divided up the people by Nielsen prisms. So these are the people that I had F1s, F2s, Y2s, M1s, and then a control group of 500. And that was more on the quantitative side, right? So the big deal when you're starting to do all this research is you really need to cross your T's and dot your I's. You really need to make sure that everybody is on the same page and has the same expectations legally of what it is that you're doing, right? So I came up with a series of um, confidentiality forms and research forms that people needed to sign off on and that made it very clear that for $10, you're gonna give me this piece of information. For $160, you're going to be in the Google Doc for, for $200, I'm going to come to your house, and so on and so forth. And that all of that information belongs to the Chicago Tribune. Thank you. 
And I did bring several of those forms um, that you guys are welcome to have. So you can kind of see how it all is set up and how it's set up very specifically for the type of information that you want. And that it's very detailed as terms of what you're giving them. Because you got to give them something if you want to keep something. Even if it's just five bucks. I have done research studies for five bucks. Believe it or not. McDonald's five bucks. Okay, so we kind of get started and we decide, okay, even though we're not changing the interface, we're not going to do anything with the interface, but let's go ahead and do some usability studies. So we did 10 usability studies, five in Chicago and five in Los Angeles. The Chicago Tribune owns the Los Angeles Times, even though the Los Angeles Times thinks it's the other way around. <laughs> it's really not. We own them. Okay, so we set up five in Chicago and five in LA. And when you're thinking about usability, what is it that you really want to test, right? So we really wanted to test certain aspects of the interface and kind of get some feedback on them. So what was it when you first looked at the page? How did you set up your, um, not persona, but yourself, right? How was that process? How was the process of setting up your favorites? of the things that you wanted to, to look at, right? And if you guys look at this interface, um, it's very black, right? Anybody that knows me knows that I love black, right? More ways than one. Leave it at that. Um, <laughs> but is that really the kind of color that you want when you're reading a newspaper? How many people can really read white on black? So one of the things that started to come up, right? When we're doing this study. And then the other thing is, how are we going to um, capture this information, right? So we had to think of how are we going to set up the room? How are we going to capture what the person is doing? But then also, how are we going to capture their face, right? I don't know how many times I've gone on an interview and I say, oh, do you like such and such? And they're like, oh, I like that. But you know in their visuals, they're really telling you, no. But when you look at that transcript, it says, yes, I like that, right? So you really need to be able to capture that unspoken uh, language, right? And then how are you going to set up the other room? where other people are going to be watching through that infamous, wonderful, law and order, two-way mess, right? So we also did 12 people of, on online journaling. So they were hired for $160 for three weeks to tell me every day what they were doing on the tablet. Six people in uh, Chicago and then six people in Los Angeles. So you can just imagine, I ended up with uh, 1,344 hours worth of data, right? Fun times. We also did a survey. We sent out a survey about midway with 250 questions and got 95% survey um, response. Also because I told them if they responded, they would get 10 bucks. But hey, you got to do what you got to do, right? And got close to 30,000 pieces of, of information, disparate pieces of information that then I had to sort through and really figure out. Are you so, going into detail on that? Huh? Are you going to go into detail on how you sort through? Feed, yes, yes, yes. Then on the qualitative side, right, we set up 33 in-home interviews, 16 in Chicago and 17 in L.A. So the first thing to do is really going back to our goals and objectives of what we really want to do to come up with that discussion guide. And I have discussion guides at the tables that you guys are welcome to have. So you can kind of see how I come up with the questions, how I kind of organize them, how I sort them, and how I set up certain time frames to ask very specific questions in a very specific sequence, right? One of the things that I really love to do are cultural probes. 
And so what I did with this group of people, the 33 people that are going to be coming to their homes, I sent them um, a little kit for them to create their own visual representation of what they felt they wanted their tablet to be. So I sent them um, crayons, markers, glue, little construction paper, whatnot. What I got back were all of these visual boards that you see in the center of these kind of ethno boards. And the beauty of that is that the people, when you go to their home to kind of talk about the tablet, they are so excited to show you their project, right? <laughs> that I, I, it's like, okay, let me, let me sit down, let me turn on the recorder, oh my gosh, okay, go! And they just want to just spill their guts. And they're so excited that somebody then listened to them. So I find that they work fabulously. So the day of the infographic interview, I usually spent two to three hours in somebody's home, really going through the usability, seeing how they use the tablet, but also seeing, I wanted to see how that tablet affected the entire family. And with this family, um, it was really interesting. If you guys have little kids, my little one is two. I swear to God, she can get on the phone, she can find YouTube. She found these Russian cartoons that she loves to <laughs> um, And the tablet got stuck, and Jason asked his daughter, Susan. And sure enough, that gun that Susan came over, beep, 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 beep and got the talent on the <laughs> Which is wonderful information for me then to understand the differences of how um, the age groups are using the tablet and how this tablet really affected the entire family and the dynamics of that family. So then we move on to analysis, right? This is when you really have the fun times, right? staying at the Chicago tree until 10 o'clock at night just because once you get into it it's really hard to, to get out of it. So I had over 1,100 pages of transcript and 80 hours of video to go through. So created a, a framework for how I was going to break down the analysis and that um, is in this uh, pamphlet. And what the project involved was not me not only doing the research, but me getting to be the teacher to those seven UX people that had never been exposed to research to kind of bring them along with me. So in creating this framework, it was really about not only doing the interviews and breaking them down, but how could I create a system that people that aren't used to the research can understand how to break it down, right? And if any of you have ever worked with me, and a couple of you have, you know that I'm the most freaking anal person around. <laughs> and I wanted the, the framework to be very explicit as to how I wanted it and how everybody should do the same thing so that we could all analyze it together. So if Susan does it very differently than I do it, and Fred does it, it's going to be a nightmare when you try to bring it all back together and try to cluster and sort and everything else. Okay, so this is kind of how it breaks down. It's basically an Excel sheet. It gives you um, I'm using the no outs framework, and then it gives you the observation and what the insight design principle was. Okay, then, by then I'm maybe like four and a half months into the project, right? And I get called up to the chief of circulation office. I'm like, oh, I need me what did I do now? Okay. And I get told that they have broke, they have divorced themselves from Hiawai. And they are not going to do this tablet. Oh. <laughs> And it's like, oh Lord, okay, do I get to go to the unemployment office or what's going on? And he said, what we'd really like you to do for the next two months is really help us understand where digital news is going, where digital media consumption is going. So take what you've got 
and start kind of resorting, reclustering, refiguring out. I still think I had maybe like five or six interviews, so, so slightly changed that discussion guide a little bit and then started um, down this new path, right? You're shaking your head because it's happened to you, right? So, this was the analysis process. All of those scripts that were on the Excel file were cut into little scripts. And I literally sorted through them. I had one guy from the UX team that fell in love with um, design research and Trent. And me and him, for about two weeks, resorted all those little strips of paper and came up with new buckets and new insights. Now going down this yeah. new road of what is digital media, right? So now we get to the synthesis. Now we've sorted all the stuff, we have all our clusters, we have our major arching design principles, our insights and whatnot. If you guys saw outside on this side of the room where there was the one batch of pizza, what I call the consumer environment map. So basically all of that clustering and all of that sorting came up with four major buckets of insights. Business, personal, news consumption, and actual features in the tablet that people were looking for and features in the interface that people were looking for, right? And presented that to the Chicago Tribune. The overarching theme was that people really wanted a news experience that was tailored to them. If I'm a foodie, I just want to look at recipes, right? If I'm a Chicago Bears fan, I just want to talk about Chicago Bears, right? Who cares, right? Believe me, when the Chicago Bears won the Super Bowl, my little flag was out there in minus 20 degree weather. But, so you really want information that's tailored to you, right? That was the biggest hardest pill for the Chicago Tribune to swallow. They felt that, dadgummit, I am the Chicago Tribune. I am the editor. I decide what's front page news, and you shall read it. And people were like, no, we shall not. <laughs> and the whole issue was that with a newspaper, guess what? You screw it up. It doesn't work, the front page news is no good, the next day you get a new one. So it's no big deal, right? Okay. One of the things that I wanted them to also think about, if you saw the timeline that was on this side of the room with the pizza, they're running around like chickens without their heads. Look. And I really wanted them to just stop catch your breath, and think for just a minute. So if you guys look at the timeline, the thing, you know, notice. Up at the top was innovation. And at first, you know, 1700 is one every so often. And then finally in the 19, you know, whatever, it's just coming at you like crazy, right? But having said that, this green bar is the circulation of the tribute, right? It's going up and up. This blue bar is their money. You can see in the year 2000, they were racking in the dough, right? Then by 2009, they're down here, right? But this is um, print. They're scared to death of digital, right? But digital is still down here. So you still have this big margin. So guess what? You guys aren't in that bad of a shape. If you just would stop and think for a minute, and rather than being <coughs> excuse me, so reactive to everything, stop, take a breath, and think, and become proactive. Put out things that people really want, that people really need. Think through the process. Okay. Part of the deal um, that I wanted to do and again, those that know, know me know my shtick. Um, I really wanted the final presentation to be an experience in and of itself. I don't do PowerPoint. Me and PowerPoint are like this. I don't do it. 
when I go for a job interview, if you want me to be doing PowerPoint day in and day out, let me just pick up my portfolio right now and I'll see you later. Because I don't see the point. I don't see the point at all. God bless PowerPoint people in the audience, but that's not fair. So, having said that, I really wanted the presentation to be an experience of itself. The Chicago Tribune did not understand their customers at all. Like I said before, they were very much used to, I am the Chicago Tribune, and you shall read whatever I give you, right? So, in the room where I had the final presentation, there were 33 of these boards, right? I tried to give you guys a sense of what it was like, but just imagine 33 boards all around the room, right? Of all the people that I had interviewed, with snippets of information of what was important to them, what they did like, what did they not like, how they could envision a better way of putting it all together. And what I did was, when you first came into the room, other than getting your badge, which was a very cool badge, this is upside down so that you can read it, like this, rather than constantly flipping it upside down. <coughs> they were all color coded, so you could tell who was a Chicago Tribune exec versus who was somebody from LA versus who was just a worker bee like me. But you've got a little clipboard. And on this clipboard, you were assigned two people. One person from Chicago and one person from um, LA. And I wanted you, rather than looking at all 33 boards, to just concentrate on those two and really get to know Robert really well. Read all of his information. Look at his visual board. Really understand Robert. And the same thing with um, Darren, right? Really understand those two people good. So that then when the presentation actually started, you have some sort of context for the kinds of things that I was showing you and would be talking to you about, right? So you can really see how people got very engaged with these. This um, is the CEO of the Chicago Tribune. And the one thing that he said to me, which was like gold, was that after that first 10, 15 minutes of him really looking at these boards, he really felt like he finally understood. Like he finally understood his customers. That to me was like the heavens have opened. Ah, right? I mean, that's what you want, right? The other thing that I did was I really wanted people to understand that this um, project and the research and everything that I had put together was not OMA. That it was really based on solid research. So really made a big deal out of the fact that I had 2,000 participants. And literally, there's 2,000 little icons and things, right? Show the discovery phase and show every for every exclamation point is one piece of feedback. The day of the presentation, this is just like a tent. This thing just cooled all over the place. So that they could really see, damn it, that girl did a lot. <laughs> yes, I did. Now pay the damn people. This is how many pages of transcripts I have. This is how many hours of video. So it wasn't that I was just making stuff up. I had solid research to back up everything that I presented to them. These are some of the companies that the Chicago Tribune owns. WGN, they also own the Food Network. And what we wanted to do since then, the project had kind of shifted to be more about digital media and media consumption, created these little books. And these little books basically tell the story <laughs> of the insights that we discovered and whatnot. And in a true kind of de de democratic way, we had like over 150 of these little books printed up and then sent them to each of their companies. And everybody that came to the presentation got a book. So I don't believe in the whole thing of, um, you know, only me gets this information 
and I'm only going to share it with you, it affects the entire company. So why not share it with everybody and let everybody feel empowered by it and be able to act upon it. Maybe the Food Network will see something slightly different than what I saw in the digital uh, news experience, but they can probably use quite a bit of the information in terms of news, in terms of media consumption as a whole, that can help them in their endeavors, right? And so, I think it's very easy for corporations and whatnot to think, oh, we, you know, why can't, you know what I'm thinking. Um, why can't you just read a report? And you know what I'm thinking too, Kelly. Why can't we just read a report? Why do you have to go interview people? It's like, oh, you know, me or Of course I have to go interview people. I need to see where they work, where they play. What are they doing? I just can't take a, a survey and says, well, 50% of the people said blah, 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 right? I don't want to hear that, right? So, I'm at at and Today we had a presentation from Google for lunch, right? Of course, they bring a very nice lunch. I'm like, ooh, ooh free lunch. <laughs> um, and Google is talking about how they've been doing for the last three years these cycles of surveys, right? And lo and behold, the lady is presenting, um, I'm not going to say her name, and she says, you know, interestingly enough, people answer that they do 50% of this or 42% of that, but when we track what they actually do, it's different. <laughs> and I'm like, hello? <laughs> you know, my philosophy on surveys is that they're good to a point, but my experience has been in the last 20 years that people answer, um, somewhat, yeah, uh, I don't know, two, uh, three. Okay, that, it's over, Woo, it's done, right? You really need to talk to people, you really need to understand people, and you really need to go out and understand where you're at. To me, experience is everywhere, right? It's not just on the tablet. It's what it's like when you call that 1-800 number for support. It's what it's like when you go to the AT&T store and you're bitching to them about your contract and your <clears throat> bill and you don't understand it and they don't understand it, right? It's when you get that package, right? I'm a Mac person, so of course you get your iPhone, right? And you start undoing the package and it's like, oh, the package, right? That's part of the experience, right? If anybody goes to Chicago, Go to a place, a store that's called Italy. If anybody's been there, a what? Italy. It's done by um, <coughs> I want to say Michael something. He's a, a chef out of New York, and those people have the experience down to a T. The way that the store is laid out, the way that the signs are, the way that the meat is put in the counter. The way that they um, present to you different kinds of recipes for the uh, sauce, for the noodles, for this, for that, for the other. The way that people talk to you, the way that they treat you. We <laughs> went to Chicago and we met up with some friends of ours from Brazil. We were in that freaking store for almost three hours. <laughs> but everything is an experience and they have it down to the key. It is amazing, amazing. And that's what I kind of want to leave you guys with. I'm going to show you a, a, a piece of this uh, Chicago Tribune presentation itself. But think about, I know a lot of people in here are the UX people, and you really think about the interface, but you also need to think about what is that person going through when they're interacting with your interface. If it's a mother or a kid, you know, how can you make that easier? How can you make that different? Taking all those things into consideration. So. This was called UX Research in the Wild, right? So I want you guys to really go out into the wild and explore, okay? So let me show you. So this kind of just starts off with, you know, why are we here today? We're here to innovate. 
crazy. Care to see what that crazy Puerto Rican down in the basement has been doing all this time. <laughs> <laughs> right? But then we also talked about what lives on from the research. So we developed different systems and different things that we kind of learned and whatnot. And then what I really wanted to do. It's, it's a scary time period. Newspapers go south. You need to have an informed uh, electorate or informed community. And how are, you know how can you get informed when you watch a lot of this TV news? And you say, oh, gosh, you know, you know like, this is past not news, and they, they you know, that's, I, I, I don't know I'm oversimplifying, and they have you know, they got to get ratings, they got to get some people. I just like I like to be I like to remain go and be as informed as I possibly can. And people who get all of their news from um, you know five minutes on the news radio or on somebody some talking head who has an agenda, um, they're they're not going to get the full perspective. I like to get you know I may not agree with some some guy in Washington, but I. It's, you, you want to go, what, is he, what is he really saying? What is he trying to say? And you try to understand where are they coming from. So you, you, can, you want to see. You, you don't want to demonize people who are saying things that you say, oh, that's wrong. But it, it is not. What is their perspective? How do they get their perspective? Newspapers can help you do that. There's a blessing and a burden to having a lot of news available because. So what I wanted to do was as part of the presentation, it goes on for about 45 minutes, is different points that I was trying to make, not Gladys making them, but let me have the people that I interviewed make it to you directly so that you really hear it straight from the consumer's voice, straight from the customer's mouth. I have another announcement about Big Design. You guys are going to dig this. We are having one of the special effects gurus from The Walking Dead. Alright. Conferences the 17th, 18th, and 19th. Go to BigDesignDallas.com. We'll be getting more details out really soon. And you can buy your tickets now. Alright. We will see you next month. Gladys is here. If you are uh, hiring, stick around. Uh, raise your hand so people can find you. We'll see you next month.